Hello, uh, my name is CJ O'Neill um, and I've been working on a project called Graffitied. Um, again, like Steve in, um, talked about in, in his talk, just at the, at the launch in November time, um, we were asked, a few of us were asked to respond to the ANZ factory and um, I don't know if any of you have been over to the site, but um, I have written a little bit about sort of my, my thoughts and my feelings when I went into the Ainsley factory and it was slightly like going to heaven. Um, I went into this room and there was just hundreds of prints on shelves, on the floor, in packets, everywhere and it was just loads of patterns and all sorts of colours and golds and everything there and I was just like, I didn't know how to respond. It was so overwhelming and I think in a way, that tiny room is like Stoke to everyone, you know, probably everyone here. The opportunities, the potential, the history, everything is, there's so much here in the city that actually sometimes it's difficult to know where to start. Um, and I suppose what excites me is that all these different projects that are coming out and everyone that's talking about them is the start of this new thing, is what Tom was asking for this morning and, and other people were asking for what are you going to do about you know sort of um, energizing and inspiring the new generation and hopefully these things will. Um, these pieces at the bottom are charity shop um, finds of Ainsley which then I redecorated with some of these patterns that I find in the, in the um, transfer room. So instead of using them in the traditional sense and, and laying them perfectly around the edges, which they were designed for, I followed the form and you let the form dictate how that sort of pattern moves across and wraps around. So the bowl and the, and the jug both are one continuous line which follows over and over and over again and they've been through seven firings. Um, for me, the way I'm sort of graffitiing these pieces was perhaps using something that is seen as precious and maybe not being precious with it, just experimenting, playing, having fun and seeing where it could go. These pieces, the circular discs of paper, are the firing sheets that I find in the factory and I use those. They actually happen to be transfer firing, so they only go to 800 degrees. So what I did was track each firing that the pieces went through and mark that with the um, little orange dots you can see. So it's the whole piece kind of tracks the history of how those pieces came to be. The other part of what I did um, for the, the launch event was with the rest of the small side plates I had these, I used water jet cutting as a process of cutting sections from existing plates. I'm interested in reusing existing materials and um, looking at um, sort of what can be done to perhaps um, re-enliven those objects and take them from the charity shops and put them back into the domestic, the commercial, whatever environment that may be, but with a slightly different take on them. So using parts of the Ainsley logo, um, the Made in England, the butterfly, the floral, the um, Ainsley kind of lettering and chopping them out of the pieces. Sometimes this provokes negative response. People are saying, you're making them useless. But actually, in some ways, perhaps it's making people relook at objects they have at home and rethink about how these objects could be used. I used them as graffiti stencils and tagged the building with all these different things. So as you came in, there was little butterflies. There was something there that perhaps had this sort of intrigue and was a temporary installation. The colours drawn from just the marks that were on the wall already. So I was trying to perhaps make this installation look as if it was put there on purpose or perhaps it was. Um, it's up to the viewer how they kind of interpret that. These are two of the pieces and again looking at the original plate and the beauty and the decoration and adding a very vibrant, very matte, very different non-ceramic material just in a spray paint form over the top of that and how that changes how you view that piece, how it challenges perhaps what it is, why it is, what's been done to it and um, the connections that you have with that piece from perhaps your own history or your own kind of um, experiences. After those initial experiments, I was introduced to a group um, in Burslem called Unity. Um, Unity are a fantastic charity who support young people who are outside of mainstream education. The group that I was introduced to are between 14 and 16, um, mainly boys, and um, there was one or two girls that, that were there in the group, but the group changed on a sort of weekly basis. Sometimes people weren't there and so others were consistent the whole way through the project. Um, and what I did was I um, went and, and just did some sessions experimenting with them on what ceramics meant to them, what ceramic could mean to um, you know, sort of me, what it was in terms of my experience of it and perhaps what their ideas were. As you can imagine, some of the reactions were not as enthusiastic as I was, <laughs> um, but some of them were. And it was brilliant to have that conversation with 14 to 16 year olds who perhaps had never thought about ceramics 
as being a career outside of working in a factory which perhaps their grandparents had or other kind of approaches that they'd had experience of and I said well this is you know part of my my practice is coming and working with you this is something that you could possibly do this is someone else who's you know I showed them some of Robert Dawson's work some of other people's work that's inspired me that I've looked at that they were sort of thinking oh I've never seen anything like that before and then this, um, over at the old post office, we were given this um, fantastic space, which is an outdoor wall, but it's covered, so it's perfect for graffitiing. And there's um, an artist, Nicholas Roach, who works with Unity, who worked with me on this, and we worked together very, very well um, on this. And we basically took the boys over and said, right, you can do anything you want on this wall, as long as it's to do with ceramics. And this is what happened. Um, it sort of, we, we basically let them do whatever they wanted to do for a whole day. And then we sort of stood back and we said, right, what do you think? Should we invite the press down? Should we uh, get people in and show them what you've done and show them this fantastic piece? And, you know, there's all these people going to come and see it. And the, no, 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 we can't show anybody this. And, and that sort of, I suppose that um, I was trying to show them that, you know, if you, if you just do stuff and you don't really plan it and you just kind of react, that sometimes the overall impact isn't as strong as it could be if you'd sat back and, and sort of spent some time looking at what works and what doesn't work. So we went through, we picked out sections that we enjoyed, sections that they thought were good, that I thought worked, and we came up with a plan of how we could kind of work with this. So we looked at pattern, how that could move across form. We just used simple paper plates and um, materials that were familiar and easy and not sort of a million miles from what they kind of were used to. And we just broke that up and saw how an object or a pattern could be broken up across different objects and different surfaces. We looked at some of the fantastic architecture. They're lucky enough to be in the School of Art in Burslem. Um, and we looked at that as a symbol and we talked about back stamps and what went into a back stamp and what it meant. And they wanted to use this image of the building that they were in, the, some of the Ainsley patterns that I'd shown them that I'd kind of become slightly obsessed with, and their logo of the charity. And we came up with a back stamp for them that would symbolise what they were doing and what they kind of had ambitions to be, which was producing fine English creative artwork in their words. There's different things about the music that they work on, the paint and the, the kind of creative um, graffiti and things that they do, and then these patterns from Ainsley. I took them around um, charity shops in Stoke-on-Trent and we went and collected all sizes, patterns, forms, textures of these plates and we put them out on the studio floor and we looked at how they could fit together, how they could work. We went back over to the space and they scrubbed that wall and painted it until it was absolutely perfectly white. And then we started again, but with a plan this time. Um, so it was kind of very in, done in stages over different weeks and we were able to kind of do one section and then step back and photograph it and think about what had worked what hadn't worked and then what we did was we painted all of those plates white we put plate hangers on the back of them and we hung them across the wall and then started to graffiti across the top of those so what started to happen was using these sort of florals the the um, butterflies and all these different sections from these Ainsley patterns all these things started to build up across the space. The plates started to sort of disappear into the piece, which was the intention. Um, and this is what we ended up with, was this whole piece, which, as you can see, goes across the shutters. The kind of more we worked on it, the more it sort of spread across the space. We started off wanting to do one wall, we ended up doing three. Um, and the, it comes across the shutters, it goes down onto the floor, it goes up on the wall, it comes down on the floor and other pieces, and right over onto this door. But there's about 45 plates in amongst that piece. And what we did then was um, select the most kind of interesting plates from that and take them out and photograph them as abstracted from the kind of overall. So it's, it's a glimpse, it's a, a kind of a snapshot of, of part of this whole piece. But in itself, these pieces at the bottom are really quite interesting pieces on their own. And what we've done now is have those digitally printed and mounted onto flat dinnerware. So... It is kind of these are the two outputs, I suppose, in a way that have come from this project that are never no, by no means finished. They're at a midpoint, but it, hopefully it's providing something that's inspiring a, a new sort of generation that's coming through. They're already doing two more ceramics projects within their kind of group, and the next year that's coming through is doing another ceramics project, not with me, but with a staff who I worked with, and hopefully that's that will continue and they'll they'll draw on that heritage and, and kind of continue to use that. What I've done is, within the old post office, I've asked people to vote on their favourite plates, and then on those pieces that get the most votes, hopefully they'll go into production and will produce a dinner service that can then be sold with the logos of BCB and myself, but the, the charity and the young people that were involved in the project. Um, and that's about it.
Thank you.